Let's get right to the point. This is a topology book with full solutions. That's right, full solutions. Let me just show you this. This is the only one I have that's like this. And I've talked about this book before, but someone emailed me asking about topology and learning topology. And I thought, you know, this one is pretty incredible. I mean, look at this. You got full written proofs or at least some pretty solid hints for every single problem in the back of the book. Thank you, Gamelin and Green, Theodore W. Gamelin and Robert Everest Green. It's called Introduction to Topology. It's a second edition. This is a reprint. Um, it's a Dover book. So Dover takes, it's a company that takes old books. Uh, they have math books and other books as well, but they do do math books and, so I can give it a whiff here, they reprint them and they make them heavy duty hardcovers which stand the test of time. I've had this for years. This book is tough. I've read it, I've used it. Um, now, let me just say this. When I first discovered this book, I was very excited because I thought, oh, this book has all of the answers in the back of the book. I am going to become a topology master. I'm going to become a master at the Frechette derivative. I'm just going to know everything. Topological spaces, and I'm just going to know all of the infinite product spaces. Yeah, in my sleep, right? I'm just going to absorb all of this because I have all the answers, right? I will know everything about the Jordan curve theorem. I can prove everything immediately. I thought I was going to be amazing, but but you have to actually think, and it's hard. So topology is a hard subject. The proofs in this book are well-written. Um, they're elegant. The authors do a great job, and I think it's an amazing book. But you still have to think. Even when they give you the answers, you're like, wait a minute, what? Like, you, you still have to think. So there is no easy way to learn topology. Like, you do have to struggle to learn. Also, you want to know how to write proofs. Um, you want to be good at it before you jump into it. So, beautiful subject though. Let's, let's take a look at this book. And here's the copyrights, 1983-99, right? So, uh, for some reason I thought it was older, but yeah, not, not that old. I mean, it's old, but not like from the 40s. Yeah, here it talks about topology. Let's skip that. Let's just go to the contents. And it says to selected exercises, um, I guess maybe because they give you some hints, but I feel like everything is there. Everything is mentioned at least from what I've seen. Um, metric spaces is uh, one. It's a good place to start. Um, we're going to look at that in a minute. It's, it's a nice, nice chapter. I've read this entire chapter. Topological spaces, uh, very good content here, very standard. So if you're taking a topology course in college, this is going to coincide very well. In fact, um, I, when I took topology as an undergrad, I was using a different book, the one by Baum, and that starts uh, by defining topologies as neighborhood systems. And that's very non-standard. It's not, it's not as common. And so I struggled. So I got this book, and this helped me learn topology because this took a more standard approach. Um, homo homotopy theory, okay. And then we have higher dimensional homotopy. And then we have uh, solutions to selected exercises, as you can see. And again, I see, I see none missing. I mean, the, it'll say follow the hint. Maybe that's what's missing. But like, yeah, they're, they're really good about it. Metric spaces, it says here. Let's read this. The ideas of metric and metric space, which are the subject matter of this chapter, are abstractions of the concept of distance in Euclidean space. Right. Um, basically, a metric space is a set with a distance function, basically. These abstractions have turned out to be particularly fundamental and useful in modern mathematics. In fact, the aspects of the Euclidean idea of distance retained in the abstract version are precisely those that are most useful in a wide range of mathematical activities. Right, 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 right. So, right, the Euclidean idea of distance, so like the absolute value is the distance function, the one we know in one space. In two space, um, you know, you, you, could, you could do um, something similar via the Pythagorean, you can use the distance function, right, with the Pythagorean theorem. And that's how you derive it. And that, that's how you construct it, you know, using the Pythagorean theorem. So you construct, you construct that distance function on the plane, and then you have a metric space. Um, and the things there that that function enjoys, the pro, like the triangle inequality, um, symmetry, you know, certain things, those things can be generalized, and you can look at other spaces, and those are the things that are useful here. That's what he's talking about a wide range of mathematical activities. 
The determination of this usefulness was historically a matter of experience and experiment. By now the reader can be assured the mathematical utility of the metric space information developed in this chapter entirely justifies its careful study. Wow, uh, this, is, this is a beautiful book. Okay, let's, let's just go right to it. Okay, so it starts with open and closed sets. It starts by defining a metric. A metric on a set X is a real valued function, little d on X cross X, this is the Cartesian product, that has the following properties. So d of xy is greater than or equal to zero for all x, y, and x. So basically it's non-negative. Um, it's gonna be equal to zero if and only if x is equal to y. So the distance between a point and itself is zero, right? So if you're at, you know, the distance between two and two, well, it's gonna be zero, that's what you want. Also distance can't be negative, that wouldn't make any sense intuitively. Um, the distance between x and y is equal to the distance between y and x, right? Right. The distance between two and three is the same as the distance between three and two, and that, that's two. It's a very real thing. Like, if your friend is standing next to you, the distance between you two is the same. Like, the distance between you and your friend is the same as the distance between your friend and you. So these are very, very intuitive things. And this one here is the triangle inequality. The distance between x and z is less than or equal to the distance between x and y plus the distance between y and z. And then it goes on, it says, the idea of a metric on a set X is an abstract formulation of the notion of distance in Euclidean space. The intuitive interpretation of property 1.4 is particularly suggestive. This property is the abstract formulation of the fact that the sum of the lengths of two sides of a triangle is greater than or equal to the length of the third side. Consequently, 1.4 is referred to as the triangle inequality. Very powerful, right? And typically, uh, when you're trying to show like something is a metric, like if you're trying to prove something is a metric, that's the hardest part of the proof, right? Because these are pretty easy things to show. Um, so this usually requires the most work. Um, so yeah, and that's something um, you, you learn to do. A metric space, x comma d, is a set X equipped with a metric little d on X. Sometimes we suppress mention of the metric little d and refer to X itself as being a metric space, right? Sometimes it's just like not needed or just cumbersome. You're just adding notation. It's not good to overcomplicate things in mathematics. Mathematics is hard enough. Uh, simple math is good math. The set of real numbers are with the usual distance function here. Uh, the distance between x and y is the absolute value of x minus y for x, y, and r, is a metric space. Its properties 1.1 through 1.4 all hold. More generally, the n-dimensional Euclidean space Rn, consisting of all n-tuples, x equals x sub 1 through x sub n, of real numbers, becomes a metric space when endowed with this metric here. Yeah, uh, really, really cool. Now, now, by the way, in two dimensions, this would be the square root of like, uh, you know, x1 minus y1 squared plus the quantity x sub 2 minus y2 squared. So it'd be, it'd be something like that. But uh, it, it does have, and again, it does have exercises. And they're good exercises. They're standard problems. If you're taking a topology class, these might be test questions, right? So this is a wonderful book for that reason. Um, it's a great supplement. Great, great supplement. Anyways, one of my favorite topology books Maybe my favorite. Um, I mean, Moncrees is a great book. It's, it's the de facto standard. Everyone loves it. I mean, I have it right here. Moncrees, it's a wonderful book. But um, this one has answers, and that makes it amazing. By the way, if you want to learn math, I have courses. They're on my website, mathsorcerer.com or freemathfits.com. They're actually on Udemy, but check them out um, because if you use the links from my website or from the description of any of my videos, um, it helps me greatly and, and, um, I lowered the price to as low as I could, so you should get a low price. I hope it's been helpful. Keep doing mathematics.